On March 19, 2013, the House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Energy and Power held a three-hour and four-minute hearing on coordinating electricity and natural gas. This is Natural Gas 102, and we're going to give it to you in five minutes. The committee background memo sets things up by saying we're using a lot more natural gas, and that's a good thing. But more gas can lead to more problems, most specifically pipeline infrastructure and storage issues and inconsistent scheduling between gas and electricity. This all stems from a bit of common sense that most folks don't really think about, and that is that coal is easy to store. And that means your typical coal plant has a pile of coal in the backyard. And you can run off that pile for some time if your supplies ever get disrupted. In contrast, most gas plants are drawing gas right out of a pipeline. And if something goes wrong with your pipeline, you're suddenly out of gas. The hearing had two panels, first featuring two commissioners from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, Philip Moeller and Cheryl LaFleur. The second panel consisted of state regulators from Texas, Colorado, New England, and the Midwest. Members at the hearing spent a lot of time arguing over why we're switching away from coal to natural gas. For Democrats, it's mostly a market issue. Cheap natural gas is also helping to transform our electricity sector. This market reality is causing some utilities to retire their oldest, dirtiest, and least efficient coal plants. And new coal plants are simply not cost effective to build today. Republicans respect the market forces, but also want to lay blame on the EPA. We have many witnesses who will be testifying today about the increased use of natural gas, which uh, is coming about for a number of different reasons. One, of course, uh, gas prices are very low right now. And a second reason is that uh, the regulatory uh, decisions coming out of EPA makes it extremely difficult to use coal. The witnesses added a little nuance on the argument. Well, if, it depends on the plant, but in some plants it's 100 percent. I mean, they are being shut down clearly because of air regulations. In other cases, uh, you'd probably say 50 percent because they're being retrofitted. They'll still burn coal, but they're of a right vintage where that investment makes sense. Many state regulators were also happy to lay blame on the EPA. Would you agree that on the other side of Washington, the EPA is working to help make it all but impossible to build any new coal plants that would diversify our power sources? Certainly, Congressman Olson. What that leaves us with in Texas is maintaining the current coal fleet and hoping that generators will add additional combined cycle gas. Uh, it looks like we're going to get a couple of new projects built that are going to be combined cycle. But probably going forward, that is the only type of generation that we'll see built in Texas. Pipeline infrastructure was easily the most discussed problem at the hearing. It's not a supply issue. We have plenty of gas. It's a pipeline issue. In some places, the pipelines are constrained in specific regions or localities. It's important to note that the gas industry and the electric industry have grown up very differently. The flexibility that we require on the gas industry is simply not part of the design requirement of the historic gas infrastructure. So our best friend in the electric business is a simple cycle combustion turbine because it is very fast and very flexible. It's the hardest thing for gas pipelines to manage because it changes their pressure so quickly and has the, prob the prospect of having an unannounced start. We may see some legislation to speed up new pipelines. In my view, there's, there's work that needs to be done in this permitting process. Uh, I'm actually going to propose some legislation that, that does that. Um, I hope it to be bipartisan. I think it's a good government solution which puts cabins some risk and, and allows pipelines to move forward where they can have a little more certainty. I think that the challenge that you alluded to is that the resource agencies uh, typically don't have the accountability to come back with an answer. We, and if you created some timeline of accountability, uh, I think they'd be a lot more responsive. I agree both on the problem and uh, that we do not control all the other agencies who have to act to get a permit out. Differing market timelines are another big problem. Electricity supply and demand must be balanced on an instantaneous basis, and problems on the electric system require immediate action, often through the operation of fast responding gas generators. However, if generators have not contracted for gas prior to the electric operating day, the gas system may not be able to respond to the real-time instantaneous demands of the electric system. 
And those are the highlights. Be sure to like, subscribe, and check out the full story on our webpage.